So I thought I'd do a video for anybody who is interested and people often ask me this on how I created my coaching business and how I created my YouTube channel, uh, which has literally changed my life. It's absolutely changed everything, the way that I live, the way that I experience life, my income, everything. So it started back in Australia when I was a social media specialist and I'd been a social media specialist for years and I wasn't interested in progressing in a corporate company. I wasn't interested in being a manager. I wasn't interested in the job, to be honest. And I was starting to feel really depleted and really bored and really wanting to escape. And I remember my brother said to me when I was at the 24th floor of a building in Sydney and he said to me, there's another Karina out there. My actual name is Karina, by the way. I know everybody sees me as Corrie, but my family see me as Karina. And he said, there's another Karina out there and she's happy and she's, you know, free and she's doing what she loves and she's helping people and she's playful. And I was like, yeah, there is another me who's doing all of those things that are way more aligned to what I'm doing now, you know, typing in numbers into a spreadsheet and doing analytics for social media pages that I honestly just didn't care about. I was really drained um, and depleted and starting to get burnt out, giving a lot of energy to something that was giving me nothing back. So I was really thinking about what can I do to give myself more freedom and more time. And um, I started thinking maybe I'll do teaching. So I did a CELTA uh, qualification when I went to Thailand. But I also did, while I was in Australia, a um, coaching qualification. So I did a course on how to become a life coach. And it was really in depth and it was really interesting. But I found it very, um, you know, prescriptive. Like, you know, you have to say these things and here's a worksheet to give people and all of this kind of thing. And I didn't like that approach myself. And um, the coaches that I had always really resonated with um, had really been people who had experienced things that I was going through. So that was something that I didn't see at the time, didn't really realise at the time, didn't put two and two together. But um, at the time, I, I so didn't like this prescriptive way of life coaching that I actually felt really demotivated and not inspired to do anything with that qualification. So I just kind of parked it and left it there. But I had it, it was there. Maybe one day I would use it. Um, and what happened was later on in life, things happened. I experienced more life. I had the whole thing with my specific person happen. Um, I was really inspired by many coaches online. I wanted to, to do what they were doing. I was looking at other people that I really loved, um, as, especially when I was struggling myself with manifesting a specific person. I really got so much value out of the content that I was watching and I was thinking one day I'm going to do that one day I'm going to help people and that was where the manifestation started of this process of what happened was that I started to, started to say I'm going to help people through this struggle like they are I'm going to do that so one of the best things that you can do is look to people who inspire you look to people that you would like to be like you know because um, modeling behavior is one of the keys to success modeling where other people have been successful helps you to have a pathway of where to go so I started looking at these people being really inspired by other coaches and thinking wow that must be cool to like have a YouTube business and like help people online and all of that kind of thing and then you know the whole situation happened with my specific person and honestly I was in Italy and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to make a YouTube channel. And it was very like, you know, inspired action. And I must say as well, before this, I had had another attempt at business, which was a social media business. It was called Tailor Made Social and it completely fell on its face. <laughs> it was exciting at the beginning and I thought, yeah, I can, I can run workshops and I can help people with their social media, but my heart wasn't in it. So I did a few workshops and then I just, it fizzled out. I didn't want to do it anymore. So that was left there. Um, but yeah, so I, I was really inspired to just make a video. If you, you know, go on my um, YouTube channel and you just do the oldest videos first, you'll see the first video that I did. I think actually it was meditation. Um, and then there was another one where I was sitting on a doorstep in Italy and it was literally just me holding my phone uh, towards me, selfie camera on, and literally just talking to the camera about something to do with manifestation. I can't remember what it was, but that was where I thought, 
you know what? I'm just going to put a video out. You know, probably no one will see it. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. I didn't have any expectation on this business. I didn't even know it was going to be a business, honestly, then. I had no expectation on it being successful or working. It was just fun. I have always loved talking to people and I've loved doing videos and I I just wanted to do it. I just, I just felt inspired to do it. So in that moment, went outside on my Italian doorstep and made my first video. And then uh, what happened, what really kicked it off was that I did a collaboration video on Agnes Vivarelli's channel because she had helped me when I was struggling and she had... Um, become a friend really and 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 we'd we I had so much to share about my journey and I was so excited to share my journey of how I'd uh, created the relationship that I was um in and basically that video brought a lot of people to me and I started thinking I'm going to I'm going to do my coaching now I'm going to use that thing that I did earlier but the thing was that the main qualification that I had was this experience and the thing is that even that, don't let that be a limitation either. Because say you're thinking, I would love to do life coaching. I'd love to help people manifest their specific person, but you haven't manifested your specific person. It doesn't matter. It actually, honestly, it doesn't really matter because you have the knowledge. You literally have the awareness and you have manifested many, many things. So use the things that you have manifested use the experience that you do have your experience your particular life that you have already had and and experienced things that is where your super superpower is your biggest struggle becomes your superpower and so what i found is that i was so excited to share my complete turnaround of events in in my situation and that video that I did with Agnes Vivarelli, doing collaborations, honestly, is amazing for um, helping your YouTube channel or helping your business or helping your credibility or whatever. Um, it, it started getting, I started getting emails, basically, from people who wanted to talk to me. And I was thinking, right, okay, so I can, I can do this now. And I didn't even have a website or anything. I had nothing prepared. I wasn't prepared for suddenly having a business. Um, but I just started thinking, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do my coaching now. I can, I can um, charge for this because it's my time, it's my energy, it's my experience. And I do have a life, a life coaching qualification, so I'm going to do it. And so I literally just um, sent some emails with prices. This is how it all began. And that was that. And I got my first client and I thought, oh my God, someone, someone's paying me to speak to me. And I could not believe it. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Again, I didn't think it was going to become the life changing thing that it did. Um, and I was just going with the flow. There was no expectation. And that was really, really key. Okay. So a lot of people struggle with creating a business because they have this need for it to work. It has to work. But if you go into it with a playful mindset, and that's the other thing, I had an Instagram account where I was just, it was on private, no one could see it. And I was just playing with ideas, playing with colors, with messages, with branding, with my voice, with what, what I wanted to say, you know, getting used to doing that. And there was no expectation for it to be right or for it to be perfect. And that's the thing, really lessening your expectations of yourself. It doesn't have to be right. In fact, it won't be. And I've made so many mistakes in my business and so many things that I've tried and thought, oh, actually, I'm going to change it to this. That's part of the process of creating a business. And that's what's happened all along my journey with creating my business is there has been times where I have tried something and it didn't work. But did it stop me? Did it make me feel like I had to give up? No, I just tried something else. So finding my voice and my message has also been um, an evolutionary process. It started with the specific person stuff and still very much is because that's the community that I've attracted um, to my channel. But I'm evolving it. You know, you can see the different colours on my um, thumbnails now of where I'm talking about different topics. I've got, you know, different colours for money, different colours for manifestation in itself, different colours for specific person stuff and relationship stuff. So I've evolved it and that's ever growing. You know, it's a, it's a process. And yeah, so what happened was more and more people started coming to want to speak to me. And I was like, wow. I'm doing a business. I've got people who, who want to speak to me. And the more I saw that, the more I believed that it was a thing and it was happening. And I just kept expecting it. I just kept expecting that to come. So at the beginning, I maybe had one client or maybe 
I think there was a maximum of three clients in the first month. But to me, that was amazing. I was so grateful. I was so excited. I just couldn't believe that, you know, people were wanting to speak to me and it was just such a new novelty thing. So my excitement that something had changed and something had happened and that I was earning what was at the time an extra income was overpowering my need for it to work. The other thing was that I had another job at the time. So I was a social media specialist again for a school, for a university. And um, I was doing that, that was my main source of income at the time. Um, so it, there was not that much pressure on it for, for it to work. And it was just this extra income that was coming in. But the more I saw it coming in, the more I expected it to. And that that expectation fed into, I expect it to happen again. And the the other thing, as I saw a video years ago with someone who'd done a YouTube channel, and she said she was very specific about I want to create a YouTube channel and I want it to have a positive audience. I want to have a successful YouTube channel which has a loving, supportive, positive audience. And I thought that's really key because you can have a, a massive following, but they could all be negative and, and say negative things. So one of the key things that I said was I want a loving, supportive, positive audience. And that's what I've got. You know, you guys are so loving and supportive and positive and it's so nice. And so... I started seeing, wow, these people are like really enjoying my videos and the comments. And I was like, I'm getting such positive feedback. It kept empowering me and encouraging me. And all I did was just do it. You know, that was it. I just did it. I just thought I'm just going to do it. Like there's nothing stopping me. I don't need to be any more ready than I am now. I'll never be ready. So I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to put a video out and see what happens and yes there were doubts there were things in me or maybe I'm I maybe no one will take me seriously and all this kind of thing but I still did it anyway and um yeah and and it just it just grew and grew and my enthusiasm for it grew and then my enthusiasm for it when I got burnt out later on and I had burnout and burnout and burnout I had to learn that lesson like three times before I actually started putting myself first honestly um was you know that made me feel depleted when I was giving too much so this is one of the things with a coaching business is that you have to have boundaries you have to be able to say no when your business starts to um pick up you know at, at the beginning it's like yay I've got a client I, I, I of course I'll do anything for you you know and I would I would literally be um, sending emails at like two in the morning, three in the morning, and just not giving myself any time off from my business at all. And I had to learn the hard way that that was going to absolutely run me to the ground. Um, with coaching as well, it can be quite emotional. It could be quite heavy emotionally. And so you have to give yourself a buffer, especially between sessions where you recover from um, a, a, a very emotionally uh, taxing session you know this is this is the kind of work it is like with being a therapist or um a psychologist or any of these kind of things where you're giving your energy to help and support people you have to give yourself energy back right so that's another thing is about being you know as much as possible being selective about the people that you work with because you can't help everybody some people are coachable and some people are not some people are willing to adapt and some people just say, I know, I know, I know, yeah, I've already learned this and you can't teach me anything new. And those people are not willing to um, expand or to see a new perspective or to try something new. So you have to know yourself that some people are willing to be coached and some people are not. And one of the things that happened with me is that I felt like a failure when I would feel depleted from a session and actually... I would, um, I, I then realised later that nobody would be able to coach a, a person who is completely and only stuck in their narrative and they will not shift from it and they don't want to be coached. They want to be right about their story. So you have to have your sort of antennae out for those type of people so that you don't feel like a failure and you don't feel depleted because the people who you want to coach will come to you with I'm ready and I'm I, I'm ready to to evolve and to try something new you know and that is so fun to work with and such a joy to work with um and yeah so over basically over the time it started with just starting it 
doing collaboration videos and just not having any expectation on it working or not. Um, and then I started to have the expect expectation of, oh, wow, it's working. And, oh, wow, people want to talk to me and people want to pay me to speak to me. And that becomes the new story, the new expectation, the new narrative. So the first month there was only like, you know, two or three clients or something. Then suddenly there was like, you know, I had like 10 sessions. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. The gratitude in that was another feedback loop. Like, wow, I'm so grateful for this. And the more I was grateful, the more it came. And so being grateful for the little parts of the journey was so key in creating my business. Um, and then, you know, I think it was the fourth or the fifth month, I made something like four four thousand pounds from some workshops and, and things that I'd done and coaching. And I just, I, I was like, whoa, my nervous system really had to adjust to that because that was totally out of the ordinary um for me to make that much money and it just it didn't feel normal I felt like oh my god do I have to do I have to tell anyone do I have to give it back <laughs> like what's gonna happen and I had to adjust to this new normal of of making more money so yeah I hope this has given you a better understanding of how I started my business and if you're thinking about starting a business um business coaching is something that I have started doing now as well um so if you would like some help with that, let me know. I'd love to help you. I am, obviously I have the experience of being, you know, years of marketing experience, but also social media. But then now I have the experience of having a business. So it's about finding your vision, your particular vision, your goal, the lifestyle you want, the money you want. You have to make it work for you. And all of these things that I've I've had coaching on myself and I've had experience myself so I can help now. So if you'd like any more information about what I do or you'd like to come along to Corrie's Transformational Cir Corrie's Transformation Circle, then all the information is in the link below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.